Hey, what's going on everyone? Brian from Drywall Nation here. Welcome to another educational series in partnership with Level 5 Tools. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to run your 12 inch flat box or your final skim. One of the most important things to look for before running your 12 inch box is to ensure that you have a nice fill coat on your first coat. So you can see here we ran the 10 inch box for our first coat and then we very quickly pre-sanded the walls using our Trimtex Black Widow sander. So we're just very quickly taking the top and bottom edge off and then one pass down the middle. We're not working it too hard, we're not trying to take too much mud off, we're just ensuring that we have a nice smooth finish before we pass our 12 inch because this is intended to be a very tight final skim. Another important thing to look for is to visually inspect your flat box. I know we've mentioned this previously but it is a very important step to make sure that you don't have any dried up mud or anything under your trowel bar because that's going to affect your final finish. You also want to make sure that you have at least a fingernail width of blade sticking out past your shoe. That's got to ensure that you have nice tight feathered edges on your final skim. All right so let's get started. We're going to fill up our flat box and again Mud consistency really comes down to personal preference. I like to have my mud a little thicker on my first pass on my fill coat with the 10 inch box. And then I go a little thinner on my 12 inch because we're gonna be applying a really tight final skim. So I just set my box on the back to two and we're gonna see what that looks like. And if we need to adjust, we'll do so. So here we go. Looking pretty good. Just picked up a little chunk of crap. Again, if you get little hitchhikers in your mud, uh, just use your finger and wipe that off the blade and then you'll have a nice finished coat. So we just did our first pass with our 12 inch box. Now is a good time to take a look at the finish and judge for yourself what setting you think you should be running your box on. I'm currently running it on two and it looks like a pretty tight skim coat. I might go a little tighter, but overall I think that's really good. So do a few seams, judge for yourself how you think the finish looks, if you should apply a little more mud or a little less mud. So again, in case you're not familiar with Drywall Nation, we use butt board, that's why our butt joints are all railroaded, they're not staggered like you would see conventionally. We just find it a lot faster. We have a flatter ceiling that's structurally superior because it's a floating recessed joint. It's not affected by the rest of the structure. So we're gonna go ahead, keep going on our seams. Again, one very important step is to pre-sand in between your coats of mud. That just ensures that your next coat is that much tighter. So we're starting with our bottom coming up. We're gonna do that one twice. We're gonna go back to the top and lift coming down off the bottom. I find it's a little easier and leaves a tighter flip mark. We're gonna collapse our handle because now we can keep it nice and tight along our body. Easier to control that way. You can almost run this one-handed with a nice short handle. So there we go. Again, you want to avoid leaving any lap marks anywhere that you can pull off, just like the 10 inch box on your first pass. So you can see here, we started against the corner, pulled off into the window. We're not starting and pulling off mid seam and leaving a lap mark there. That's just unnecessary and it's extra sanding. So we just carry that through right into the window. We pinch our brake as we're nearing the end and then we pull off. So we'll show you a closer look at how the brake works. You'll notice when I'm walking around, I carry the box right where the handle meets the box. So that's how I carry it around. All the weight is mostly at the top here, so it's easy to carry that way. So now I'm gonna pinch my brake. I can let go of this hand, grab the handle, put it to the wall, and then when I'm against the wall, I can let go of my brake. So now I have free range movement along the wall here. So I can start to go, no hand on the brake, 
And then as I get towards the end of the wall, I pinch my brake and pull off. So that's how you, you avoid gouging into any seams. You don't want your wheels running into intersecting seams. So you pull your brake, that locks your box, and then you're able to lift off without gouging any intersecting seams. So here's one of the advantages of using an extendable handle. This is a 32 inch extendable handle. I like it because it's nice and short for walls, so it's easy to apply pressure. And it's also long enough that I could coat eight foot ceilings comfortably. So very nice option to have. Again, we're going over our seams twice. This is called chasing or tracing. And it just helps ensure that you don't have any bubbles or little pits in the mud. Also very important on your final skim, if you are pre-sanding. I know pre-sanding is kind of optional. Some people like to just scrape. Personally, I find I get better results when I pre-sand in between coats, but that also means that there's little dust pockets on the drywall, on your seams of mud. If you just pass over it once, sometimes you'll get a dust pocket between your mud, and then when you come to do your final sand, it'll kind of flake off. However, when you pass the box twice, that eliminates those little dust pockets. So you can see I'm going one way, finish off the seam, and then I do the whole thing over again, eliminating any little dust pockets or little pits and imperfections in the mud. So here's an example of what I was just talking about. There's a dust pocket right in the mud there. So that's the dust that's being trapped between the mud and the joint, and that's caused from pre-sanding. So there's a little bit of dust on the surface. Now, if I only passed over that once, when that dries and I come to final sand, that's gonna flake off and you're gonna have imperfections in your mud. So that's one of the importances of passing over your seam twice. So I'll give you an example here. So I'm gonna finish this off, and now you can see the dust pocket is there. When I go over it a second time, it's gonna get rid of that little dust pocket and now it's gone. So one of the importances of tracing or chasing your box. So I just did that seam once. You can see there's a little bit of dust trapped right there. If I go over it a second time, it gets rid of that. Something else that's good practice when you're running the box is just to carry a six inch knife on you. You can see here, I have a little bit of a thick edge when we started our box run. So if you have a knife on you, you can just kind of easily clean that up as you go before it gets dry and that helps with less sanding down the road. So again, another good tip to know if your box is centered over your seam. What I like to do is just eye up this little bolt in my center axle here and just make sure that that's pretty much right in the middle of the seam. That way you know you're pretty well centered. So if you take a look at these seams here, we just did these about 10 to 15 minutes ago, and already they're starting to set up quite nice. If I run my knife across there, you can see it's not leaving any type of drag marks. So it shows just how tight of a skim we're leaving with our flat boxes. So myself personally, I like to run my 12 inch a little thinner and leave a much tighter skim coat. My fill coat or my block coat is on my first pass with my 10 inch box. So that gives you an idea of how tight your skim coat should be when you're running your 12 inch. So I hope you enjoyed that quick video on how to run your 12 inch flat box for skimming your walls and ceilings. For more tips and tricks, check out our other educational videos with Level 5 Tools. Thanks for watching.